Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back for helping you with your builds. Yes gang, I am back in the studio, I'm back in my happy place guys. Now I'm breaking myself in gently before we do really technical and multiple camera things. So I'm taking one camera, I'm sharing some simple back to basic techniques with you. Yeah, and I'm finding my mojo again, you know what I mean? I've certainly found my smile, now I want to pass on my passion. Calm down Bosco. Right, so what are we up to? Well, I'm working on my big Burma build, yeah, because it's a personal project and that's where I'm feeling the love is at the minute. Yeah, and so one of the projects that I did just before I sort of had to take the break because of the health and everything was I was working on Jungle Roads. Now, it's given me an opportunity because I've jumped back in, I've got them half built, so we might as well finish them. But as part of that, the modular. And they're not just simple strips, you know, they're a little bit more complicated than most. So I thought I'd take you through some simple techniques, yeah, to really make sure that your modular features fit together, yeah? So not just vertically, horizontally, vertically as well. All will become apparent. So let me take you through what we're doing. Come on down, folks. So folks, what I've got here is I've got two of my pieces of my modular road for my Burma build. Now, when it comes down to making your tracks and your rivers modular, obviously the first thing that you've got to make sure is that they're the same width. So on a top down view, a topographical view, they need to be laid out the same. There's a couple of little tricks that you can do for this. First off, when it comes to cutting your, your actual materials and everything, yeah, get yourself a little template. Okay, as on this, you can see, bank, road, bank. And then when I came to cut it out, I could just go along and just double check when I was doing my, my drawings out and everything that, yeah, that's right, that's how it fits. When I was beveling my edges, yeah, that's how far I want my bevel to go. All those sort of things. So a little, what do you call it, sort of template goes a long way. Now, you don't just have to draw it on a strip. When it comes to actually cutting them out and actually cutting your bases for your modular roads, yeah, what you can do is do the same on a metal ruler. So a little bit of masking tape on, yeah, bank, road, bank, get to put that down, you cut it out. And the benefit of this is as you're cutting and you're doing your marking, you can also mark on where your banks need to go so you know where your bevels are going to go. And then as you're actually laying on the foam like I have, if you go to this extent, yeah, you know it's me. Then what you call it? In that case, you can actually use this to mark where the bevel on the bank needs to come up to, which is what I've done here. Yeah, on those two points. So, first off, get the width right. Next, getting a nice clean, what you call it? Nice clean line. T squares, capitalizing on the edge of professionally cut materials works really well for that. Yeah, above all, sanding paper. And then works really well as well. Yeah. As long as you can get a relatively clean cut, yeah, and they're the same width, you'll have no problems. Now, where it does come problematic is where you want to build them up from more than just a simple bevel and you want to add features such as foam and everything like this, like I'm doing. Yeah. As always. Now, in this situation, if you look here, yeah, you can see we've got a bit of a gap there. Yeah. Now, when we paint this up and do all that, that's going to stick out that harsh edge. Yeah. And to just give you a better idea. Yeah, if I look at that one, let me bring that up for you. Here we go. Yeah. You can see that gap and you can see how it's going to be problematic. Yeah. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Sore thumb. Now, the way we deal with this is with Daz Putty. Okay, and it's just a simple task. All you need to do is to add a little bit of putty onto it and fill the gaps. Yeah, but how do you make sure that you get them to meet neatly and the bevel's always the same? Well, this is where it gets clever. Templates. Well, this is a little bit of uh, EPVC foam board. Yeah, just exactly the same as the base. And all I've done on it is I've got my bevel. Yeah, I've cut it out, I've sanded it. And so it matches. 
yeah, my piece nice and clean. And then what I can do is we can start to fill the gaps and use this as a sort of guide. Yeah, so let me show you what I mean. First off, let's do a little bit. So, yeah, using Daz modeling putty, just because it's quick and easier. Daz is a bit firmer than what you call it than filler, so it's going to be hold up a bit better for this job while we shape it. Uh, and it's cheaper than Millie putting green stuff. So if you look there, yeah, if we put that there, we've got see that little bit of a lip and that gap. So let's make that disappear first. So hold that there. Yeah, put my water on, get my putty. Yeah, clean that off. Yeah. You gotta take the sort of excess off on this. Keep your materials wet as well, your tools. Yeah, when you're working with Daz, otherwise they'll stick. So yeah, and yeah, give it a little. A little slide back and forth. Oh, now, quick clean up. If I bring it back up, we can put it there. That's gone perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, easy, isn't it? The key with working with Daz Putty, guys, is make sure you use water. Lots of it. Here, I'll throw this little bit in here. You need water on the material that you're sticking it to. Yeah, so you've got to make sure that there's water on the base yeah, for it to get a good adherence. Any tools like this, you need water on to make sure it doesn't stick to them. Yeah, and it slides. Yeah, do it both ways. Easy peasy. So water on what you're sticking it to. And then generally, if I'm using a little bit, I'll dip it in water just to soften it up. Yeah, Daz tends to dry out really quickly with it being an air drying clay. Yeah, and the moment you get it out, it starts to dry up, which can make it a real git to make it stick down to stuff. You're adding the water just basically to reactivate the clay so it can soak in a bit. So we've got this one here. Look at that, that's a massive hole. Yeah. Come on. Let's just put a wedge in there. Yeah, break it off with my fingernail. Probably shouldn't do that because that's going to be under my fingernail later. Do you know what, guys? It's been ages since I've done a terrain video. And I was nervous, to be perfectly honest. And I don't know how long this is going to be because it's, it's, I'm breaking myself in gently. I'm breaking myself in gently. Yeah, but I am enjoying it. Right. So all I'm doing here is I've got my guide on. I'm pushing it literally over the top of the guide. Yeah, and I'm smoothing it out onto the piece. Thing is, if it goes over the guide, I can add water, I can thin it down, I can smooth it out. All I need to do is make sure that it matches that bevel. Yeah, and cleanly. Eesh. Obviously this is a biggie. So let's give it a bit of a... Yeah, there we go. Look at me. Making a mess, isn't it fun? Yeah, so what I'm basically doing, all right, let's get a good shot of that. There you go. Yeah, you see how it's how that gap suddenly just blended in. Now, when you move this, you do get a little bit of a lip and that sort of stuff, so you just need to sort of like smooth it off, basically, like you're troweling cement or something like that. And there you have it now. You always come in with a little bit of sandpaper, take off any sharp edges. But look at that for a contour. If you remember, that was actually fractured, you know, before. So what we've managed to do is by using a simple EB EPVC foam board template. Yeah, we've managed to shape that completely. Yeah, make sure it all matches up. As he redoes it. I'm not redoing it, I'm just fiddling with it because it's me. Yeah. So let's do that one more time for you. Just take you through it. Let's pick a good one that needs. There we go. There you are. That one's well off. Yeah, if I put it next to that. 
Yeah, you can see clearly there, guys. Yeah, how big of a, a gap that is. So, real quick, template, wet it, wet where we're working. Stick that on there. Get my daz, because I want my daz. Yeah, wet it. Throw it in there. Yeah, what I'm doing is just pushing up towards it. Yeah, so I get a nice bevel. Not worried about if there's any overspills. I'll cover those in the what you call it section when we come to texturing it. It's just the contour I'm concerned about right now. Yeah, next slide. And clearly, once if you're not explaining it as you go, yeah, you can do this actually a lot quicker. Yeah, but obviously I'm sort of talking it through. And I've got a lot of pieces to do, but you should be able to do a set like this in about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and that's not much considering that's all it's going to take for you to get really nice, perfect meeting. Right, let's push that up a bit. That's it. Yeah. Really nice, perfect meeting terrain boards. Right, so. Yes, I do like to fiddle. Right. Oh, even though they're not dry yet. There's the one we did before. There's this one. Hey, presto. Perfect join. Absolutely perfect. Obviously, they're wet, so I don't want to mess with them too much. Because if I stick them together, they'll stick together. So if we put those over there, clean this out. Let me show you something I did earlier. Da -da -da. Yeah, so this was another piece that I did. Yeah, quite heavy cracking. Blend's not brilliant there, but it'll get textured. Same on this side as well. Yeah, not worried about that. That'll get covered in texturing. But if you look at the profile, you can see where on that side I've added quite a bit. And on this side, yeah, I've pretty much built the bank up on that one. So if we get that and We get this. Move that across, obviously. There you go. Perfect profile. Every single time. Yeah. All because the last little bits of shaping have been done with a template to guide it and to make sure that it is uniform. So there you have it, folks. Easy, simple techniques, guys, for making sure that when you're doing complex modular stuff, it really works. And remember, this, this technique isn't just for roads. You can use it on rivers as well, just like this. And so whether you're making it with roads or rivers, yeah, simple templates, a little Daz model, Daz putty work, yeah, and a bit of water, it ends up beautiful, guys. Right, let's wrap this up. So folks, there you are. That is the first tutorial of the year. And I'm quite happy with how it went, you know, considering how long it's been. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you glad to see me back? Are you loving me sharing my passion again? Now, guys, uh, as always, yeah, plenty more of this sort of stuff to come. Make sure you check out the Big Burma list if you want more. Watch uh, Jungle Stuff, the Back to Basics playlist if you want more technical stuff, because that's where this video will be. And also, obviously, if you like it, please like it. If you do really like it, please consider supporting the channel now more than ever. There's links down below where you can send a one-off via PayPal. Yeah, that just helps get me studio kit materials. It helps me go through all this for you guys. Or you can jump on and become part of the TTT gang Yeah, on Patreon and get exclusive access to behind the scenes footage, uh, galleries of pictures, early access and loads more. Plus, support from me on your builds. So that's where I'm hanging out. If you really like what I do here and you've made it to the end, it's a dollar a month, guys, and to be truthful, I could do with the support right now. So, if you're considering it, 
give it a go. See how it goes. See if you like it. I'll see you in there, hopefully. And in the meantime, I'm going to be back with more Burma build, more terrain tutorials, and all I can say is keep cracking on, guys. All the best, yeah? Ta-da!